In this video, we're going to combine your proofwriting skills with your knowledge about isosceles triangles. And as we get started, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple new theorems. The first theorem on the page says that when you have two sides in the same triangle that are congruent, we know that the angles opposite from those sides must also be congruent. So that's what it says in words. If we think about what's going on in a diagram, it's going to make this theorem a little bit easier to understand. So it says when you have two sides in the same triangle that are congruent, so in other words, those two sides that I just marked in that isosceles triangles, we know that the angles opposite or across from those sides also have to be congruent. So the angle that's opposite from that left leg is going to be the right base angle. The angle opposite or across from the right leg is going to be the left base angle. So essentially, that's what that theorem is saying. The second one is very similar but in reverse. It says anytime you have two angles in the same triangle that are congruent to each other, we know that the sides that are opposite those angles also have to be congruent. So here's what that looks like in a picture. You've got this triangle here with these two congruent angles. We know that the sides opposite those angles have to be congruent as well. So the side opposite the left base angle is going to be the right leg, and the side opposite the right base angle going to be the left leg. So one word of advice or word of caution is that in order to use this theorem, you have to have an isosceles triangle. Both of these congruent angles and sides have to be inside the same triangle. In other words, it's got to be an isosceles triangle in order for this to work. Let's go take a look at an example of how this might be used in a proof. The directions for 1 and 2 say to use the congruent sides or the congruent angles that are given for each triangle below in order to determine an additional pair of congruent parts. So in this first example, they give us that side GA is congruent to side GB. And this is where your highlighters are going to be particularly helpful. If I take my highlighter and highlight the triangle that contains GA and GB as sides, I can see that it's that red triangle that we're talking about that is the isosceles triangle. So if segments GA and GB are my legs, or congruent legs, I know that I've also got to have a pair of congruent base angles down there at points A and B. I can't name those blue angles angle A and angle B because there's multiple angle A's and multiple angle B's in the picture. I can't call them angles 1 and 2 because they've already used angles 1 and 2 in the picture. So I'm going to call them angles 3 and 4. And I know that they have to be congruent to one another. And as far as justification for that, when a triangle has two congruent sides, I know that the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. All right, moving ahead now to number two, our given is a little bit different, but of course I'm going to go and mark it in the diagram. Angle TPS is this little purple guy down in the bottom left-hand corner, and angle TRQ is this purple fella up at the top of the triangle. So my isosceles triangle here, I'm going to take my highlighter, and again I'm going to highlight this isosceles triangle. He's the blue one. Because those base angles are congruent, I know that the sides opposite or across from those base angles also have to be congruent. So the side that's opposite of angle TRQ is side PQ, and the side that's opposite angle P is going to be side RQ. So I know that segment RQ has to be congruent to segment PQ. And that's because when I have a triangle with two congruent angles, It has to follow that the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. All right, and now the part that you've been waiting for with anticipation, the actual big proof itself. Let's go ahead and in number three, let's go ahead and mark our diagram.
So angle C, D, E is just a little blue fella inside that triangle. He's congruent to angle C, E, D. So again, I'm looking at that triangle saying to myself, ooh, that triangle has two congruent base angles. Must be the sides opposite those base angles are also congruent. So it must be that side CD and CE are congruent to one another. And likewise, if those angles inside that triangle are congruent, I know that their supplements, which are outside that triangle, have to be congruent as well. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those. I'm not sure that those will be helpful, but they might be. It's a good thing to know. And then the other thing I know is that segments AD and BE are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those as well. What we're trying to prove here is this pair of congruent angles. So I'm going to go ahead and use my highlighter to highlight angle ACD. We're trying to prove that red angle congruent to the red angle BCE. So I know if I could prove the triangles congruent, I could use CPCTC in order to make the angles congruent. And it just so happens that I can prove those red triangles congruent by side, angle, side. So my plan, or my outline, is to prove the red triangles congruent by side, angle, side. And the parts that I want to use in order to accomplish this are side CD being congruent to segment CE. I want to talk about these supplementary angles, which I'm going to call angles 1 and 2, being congruent to one another. And my second pair of sides that I want to talk about in my proof are side AD being congruent to side EB. All right, so let's go ahead and get this party started. I'm going to go ahead and talk about this first pair of congruent sides to begin with, I know they're congruent to one another because I use the congruent base angles in the given. So as I begin this proof, I'm going to begin this proof by talking about those congruent base angles. And I think to be different this time, I'll do a statement reason proof. So for all of you two column lovers out there, this one is for you. Let's get a little two column action going on here. So I know that angle CDE was congruent to angle CED. And the reason for that is because it's given to me to be a true statement. Because those base angles are congruent, I know that side CD must be congruent to side CE. And that's because when I have a triangle when two congruent angles, The sides opposite or across from those angles are also congruent. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cite statement one because statement one is where I've got the two angles of the triangle that are congruent. All right, next in my proof, I want to talk about angle one being congruent to angle two. This was not a given. Once again, I used these congruent base angles in the blue triangle in order to get those angles, or I used the supplements of those angles. So I want to talk about the supplementary angles. And I guess I'll go ahead and do that next in my proof. I know that angle CDE has to be supplementary to angle 1. And I also know that angle CED is supplementary to angle 2. And that's because when I look at the picture, I see those linear pairs going on in the picture. So linear pairs are supplementary. And now I'm all set up perfectly positioned to go ahead and to say that angles 1 and 2 are congruent. And that's because congruent angles, which I had in statement 1, have congruent supplements. And I had their supplements, or talked about their supplements in statement three. So that's a pair of congruent angles. The last pair of congruent parts I need to talk about before I can say those triangles are congruent. So I have to talk about segment AD being congruent to segment BE.
That's an easy reason. I know that's a true statement because it's given to us to be a true statement. So now I've got my two pairs of congruent sides, my pair of congruent angles. I'm all set to go ahead and say that triangle ACD is congruent to, and when I talk about the second triangle, I have to match up my parts. So angle A corresponds to angle B in the triangle on the right. Angle C up at the top corresponds to angle C. And angle D in the triangle on the left corresponds to angle E in the triangle on the right. So that's side angle side, using steps 2, 4, and 5 to get those sides and those angles. And now once my triangles are congruent, I know that all of their corresponding parts have to be congruent. And it just so happens that one pair of their congruent corresponding parts are angles ACD and angle BCE. And I'm going to go ahead and use CPCTC. I'm actually going to take a minute and fix that and make it right. So again, my reason is CPCTC. You could say congruent triangles have congruent corresponding parts. That would be another way or another reason, way to, to write your reason. All right, so there should be lots of good ideas that you picked up over the course of this video. If you don't have some key ideas and important understanding, some essential takeaways, you need to go back and re-watch the video. And then down at the bottom of the page, go ahead and use the congruent sides or the congruent angles in each picture in order to find additional pairs of congruent parts.